So I just came out of my second referral doctor appointment and he confirmed that I don't have prolapse. But he says that what he's looking at is normal. <laughs> when I know for a fact it's not because it was there, I have this big something or other, a bulge, a growth. And he's saying it's normal, but it wasn't there. It's only been there in the last, I don't know, maybe five, six years. So I don't know, I, I, I'm just so confused. I asked him, is it a cyst? No. He kept talking about the urethra and the bladder, but he told me that everything's in its place. He told me not to touch this thing, but that it's normal. Well, if it's normal, why can't I touch it? And why is it so painful when I do touch it? Not that I touch it a lot. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just absolutely, utterly confused. So, that was my second referral. I have one more referral in August. The first doctor was of Asian descent. The second doctor was of Jewish, I guess, Jewish descent. And those were both men. And now the third doctor I'm going to go see is a female Italian doctor. I'm hoping that a woman looking at what I'm looking at might have a different opinion than a man. I don't mean to be sexist, but I know what it should look like because I know what it used to look like. And what it looks like today, it doesn't look like the way that it used to five, six years ago. And I know that they can see it. I'm not making shit up. When I got to see the monitor with the ultrasound technician, I didn't need him to tell me. I saw with my own eyes. I do not have prolapse at least not of the bladder and the uterus, but there's still something. <laughs> so I guess I have to wait till August now. <sighs> I don't know what to say, guys. I really don't know what to say. Relief that I don't have prolapse, yes, but still a concern that what I'm seeing is not, well, I don't know if it's normal. <laughs> Maybe that's the, the it's the language maybe that I'm struggling with. Maybe this is normal for someone of my age, but it's not normal to my body. So what is it? Nobody is telling me exactly what it is. And that's what I want to know. And I just, I don't seem to be getting the answers that I'm looking for. What's today, June, June 6th today. I have at least two more months of waiting, but that's okay. I'm not going to let it ruin my summer. I think the funniest thing about today's appointment is that I had to wear a mask and I haven't worn a mask in, I don't know, two and a half years, <laughs> almost three years. I mean, I wore it for just to go grocery shopping, which was maybe once a month. But to be quite honest, it makes me nauseous whenever I have to wear one. Now in other news, seeing as how we're on the medical kick today, I was referred to a clinic that prescribes CBD oil uh, for fibromyalgia. I have a Zoom appointment next week, and then I guess we'll see. I feel so nauseous. Oh. They did a pap test, and I've always been extremely sensitive. Today I was ultra sensitive, and now I just feel nauseous. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Oh. I don't know, is that normal? It's never been normal for me. But you know, I'm learning something. The older I get, normal changes. The body simply isn't what it once used to be. I think sometimes I struggle with that, if I had to make a confession. I think at this point I should probably tell you the news that I received from the first doctor, which is why I asked for a second and third referral. First of all, I was massively age discriminated by my first doctor. And secondly, when I first went in to see him, he told me I did not have prolapse. Then after the ultrasound, in spite of the fact that the technician and I both saw that I didn't, and the technician told me that I did not have prolapse, I got the results over the phone. He then told me that I had prolapse and I said, well, wait a second, wait a second. You told me I did not have prolapse, which is why you sent me to the ultrasound. And I saw with my own eyes, and the ultrasound technician told me that I do not have prolapse, but now you're telling me that I have prolapse. So which is it? You have a eight millimeter cyst. Yeah, that's something new. Okay, whatever. 
that's not what I'm talking about either because this is it's a whole lot bigger than eight millimeters so I know that that's not what we're talking about that eight millimeter cyst is way up into the vagina this is right there as soon as you open the labia so what is it did you not did you not see it like when you were down there did you not see it I mean it's the first thing you see when you open the labia it's right there it's like hi <laughs> you can't get in the vagina because there's this blockage so you know if it's not prolapse then what is it he told me that I'm just old and I should live with it which is why I went to the doctor that referred me to that gynecological specialist and said you need to give me another doctor because I don't feel like I was properly medically treated First of all, I don't feel like I was properly medically diagnosed. I don't feel like I was properly medically treated. Honestly, I don't even feel like I was treated properly as a human being. I just want to have somebody with a good bedside manner, that's professional, that's thorough, that clearly communicates, that is willing to truly examine and explain to me what is going on with my body. Hence the second and third referrals. I decided to walk home through the little woods it's helping with the nausea, fresher air maybe. Maybe just a change of scenery or maybe my body was in shock because you know I haven't had a pap test in like five years. Maybe it's just the body is releasing. You know, being in the woods is very therapeutic, it's very healing. The trees emit negative ions which are very healing to the body, literally at a chemical and cellular and energetic level don't believe me do some research problem is oh mosquitoes if I knew I was gonna come through here I would have put some bug juice in my bag but I don't know I never thought about it so I have a confession seeing as how we're at church today this is my church <laughs> so seeing as how we're at church today I have a confession I've really, really struggled these last, <laughs> oh, let's see, 17 years, <laughs> 16 years, okay, definitely 15 years with living in the city. Dom and I, after long conversations, decided that we would start planning to move out of the city. That was, uh, I guess, about, I don't know, maybe three years ago, four years ago. About four years ago, I guess. Just before COVID hit, anyway. And then, of course, unfortunately, when COVID hit, you know, the prices just went through the friggin' roof. I'm talking rent and the cost of buying. And then now, you know, inflation and everything's just so incredibly expensive that I don't even know if I can entertain that at this point. So I'm kind of in a holding pattern. I feel like I'm in the meantime waiting for something to change, something positive. <laughs> I know I'm not the only person in this boat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the whole world is sharing this philosophy with me. I'm not gonna say that I pray every day for change because I think there's a part of me that has found some sort of acceptance of it is what it is. But that said, change would be nice and not the change in the direction that we're going because I don't like the direction that we're going. I mean. Really, does anybody? I don't think so. That uh, was weird. There was a guy on a bike back there. Oh, you know, the other day, I'm, I'm kind of rambling at this point, guys. The other day when I went to the bank and there was that uh, situation with the TTC, this place has always been, this neighborhood has always been relatively safe and I don't know, it just, the whole world feels unsafe, doesn't it? More and more so. And a friend of mine in Texas said, you know, maybe it's time to move. If only it was that easy. It's not. The cost of everything has made it absolutely impossible for Dom and I to move. And we're not alone. We're not alone. And it's weird because in past years where I'm living, I always felt trapped. 
but I had the means and, and the resources and everything there to move. It's almost like it was kind of like a psychological tra entrapment. Um, and now it's real. The trap is real. I'm, I'm literally, genuinely, honestly stuck. But the funny thing is I no longer feel trapped. Weird, right? But it's not really weird because I've done a lot of inner work on my psychology and on my emotions to help move me out of that feeling trapped energy which is why in spite of the fact that I more genuinely am trapped I don't feel trapped but at the same time situations like that with the guy on the bike you know I'm not uh, not easily intimidated I've uh, stood up to guys that were six foot three, six foot four, 250 pounds, and I'm not afraid of people usually. And I don't think this is because I'm getting older. I think it's because people are genuinely getting more friggin' loco in their head. And I think because I've come into greater mental and emotional well being. I'm starting to see all the craziness even more in the world. It's kind of hard to see the craziness in the world when you yourself are in a place of crazy, right? You know, I was in a place of crazy for most of my life, which was probably why if somebody like that in past would have come up to me, I would have turned around and probably attacked him verbally, <laughs> like big time. I would have got up all in his face. I'm not that person anymore. And maybe it's because I know I'm not that person anymore that I'm starting to realize that maybe I'm actually becoming more vulnerable. You know, being crazy can be good. It can be protective at times. I'm not going to say I was scared of that guy on the bike. But for the first time in, I don't know, maybe forever, I was cautious and I was nervous. Whereas in past... They attack me verbally, I attack them verbally. If they attack me physically, I attack them physically. <laughs> I don't know. Definitely something within me has changed. This little walk through the woods did me a world of good. I'm definitely a meat sandwich for those mosquitoes today. I'm laughing because as I'm laying on the table waiting for the doctor to come in, I'm reading all the symptoms that were, you know, COVID-related symptoms. <laughs> And I'm thinking, huh, yeah, I have all those plus some. Well, not now, because I'm healthy now. It took three weeks, but <laughs> I'm finally healthy. Even the body blisters and rashes are gone. That's a hawk. very windy today but because it's nice and hot well at least it's warm it almost feels like I'm if I was to close my eyes I'd honestly feel like I was on a boat on the lake it's that kind of breeze and warmth today and there's enough humidity in the air yeah I like that that I can do without this is my rose, it's called Easy Does It. It's the first rose that Dom and I bought together. I prefer being barefoot.